Have you ever wished that you could open Windows on a web form the same way that you can in Windows application programming? The RAD Window Control now makes this ability available with very little effort. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to populate a RAD Window object and place it on the page, how to display it when the page loads and in response to user input, how to control the window positioning, and how to collect and return data to the underlying window. Notice as we develop this demo that we do this without any server-side code at all. We'll show you how to add a RAD window to your forms along with its content. First, in its default position, centered in the form, and then with its position set relative to another element. We'll also show how to make the window be visible when the form first loads and also in response to user-initiated events. Of course, the features that make the RAD window extremely useful are being able to pass information both to the window and also back from the window to the calling window. We'll also cover the two different ways of calling the form, both declaratively by hooking the window up to an element which is going to open it, as well as reacting to an event programmatically. We'll begin our demonstration by creating a new ASP.NET AJAX-enabled website. And we do that because it's going to automatically place an ASP script manager component onto the form for us. This component manages the communication between the AJAX-enabled components on the web form and the server side. The next thing we're going to add is a RAD window component. And I'm just going to select the Vista skin for this component. Then we can close up the smart tag. Our RAD window needs some content to load into it. So I'm going to add a new item to contain that content. It's going to be an ASPX page. I'm going to call it target. And then on that target page, I'm just going to place some whimsical text so that we can know that we're seeing the window that we're opening up. We'll save that. And then back on the default page, one of the properties that we're going to set on this RAD window is the navigate URL property, and that is going to be target.aspx. Now, in its very simplest form, you may want to display the window, the target window, with the message when the page first loads. In that case, we'd set this visible on page load property to true and then run the application. And so what you get when the page loads is the window popping up in the middle of the page with our question wondering what the name of the first goldfish was. And there's really nothing fancy about this window. It doesn't do anything for us except convey some information to the user when the page first loads. So to add a little more functionality, we're going to open up the toolbox and we'll scroll down to the standard HTML components. We'll add a div to our form. So we'll just add a little bit of text in here, and the text that I used was help. And then we need to give the div an ID if it's going to do some work for us. So the ID we'll give it is div help, and then we'll copy that because the next thing we need to do is go back over to our RAD window and find the opener element ID, which is going to be div help. And what that's going to do for us is when this div is clicked, it'll open our window. So you see we still have it loading when the page loads. Now if we go up here and click on help, our window opens up again. And one of the next things you might want to concern yourself with is the positioning of the window when it opens up and presents itself to the user. And in order to do that, we can give it an offset element ID. And in this case, div help is about the only element we've got on the page and we can set the offset to the left and we can set the offset from the top. So if we run that, when the window presents itself, it's no longer at its default position in the center of the page. The top and left is offset 40 pixels from the top and left of this help element. And of course, when we click it, it also presents itself there. Now another thing that's interesting to note is if you move this, so we can move the window around. Well, that's pretty neat, isn't it? You can grab it and just drag it around. And then we close it. If we click on Help to open it up again, it opens up back where we left it, 
rather than at the position that we told it to. So it remembers where it was when it was last closed. Now, since what we're loading into our red window is an ASPX page, you can imagine that this target page could contain a lot of different things. But sometimes you may want to pass some information from the main window into the target window, and at the same time, you may want to collect information from the target window and pass it back to the main window. So fortunately, the RAD window is set up to do that. You need to implement a little bit of JavaScript. So let's write some JavaScript. And just keep things organized a little bit, I'm going to insert a table. And I'm going to make the table have three rows and two columns. And I'm going to take this div that I've set up, and I'm going to drag it into this cell right here. We can make it a little bit smaller. It doesn't, doesn't really need to be that big to display the help. And what we're going to do here is write a little program that's going to help college graduates with history degrees in their chosen occupation. So for that, we need to know the number of burgers. And then we're going to have a text box that lets us put in a number of burgers. And then we're going to go over and give it a default value of three burgers. OK, kidding aside, the business part of this is that when we click on this Help button, we want to read the number of burgers that are inside this box here. And we're going to pass it to the pop-up dialog and display it. And that means we're going to be getting some fresh data every time. So the first property we're going to set on the RAD window here is this reload on show property. And we want it, instead of caching our window and redisplaying it, we want it to actually reload the window. And that's going to trigger the onload event in the window that we'll get to in just a moment. The next property is on client show, and this tells it what JavaScript function to go and run when the client is being shown. So we'll just use the on client show event, and we'll write that right now. And just to keep things clear in the code, I think I'm going to rename this text box to be numburgers. So if we go over to the markup page, up in the head, we can add a script and tell it that the Type is going to be equal to JavaScript. And then we'll paste in a JavaScript function we've already written called onClientShow. And I'm going to make the case agree here so that it doesn't tell me it can't find it. And what this function is doing is it's going to go out and find our numburgers text box. And it's going to get the value out of there and set it to our variable otext. And then we're going to create a new object called arg. Now, because it's an object, it's very flexible. You can just kind of define things on the fly. So one of the elements we're going to define for this arg object is text value. And we're going to set that to the number of hamburgers that we want to order. And then we could set other things in here, too, like colors, red and yellow, for instance, and pass those along. Arg doesn't really care. It just creates new properties on the fly. And then that object, our arg object, is passed in as the argument to the rad window. And rad window knows and understands that there may be an argument being passed in, and it'll use it over in the window when it opens it up. Okay, so now let's go do a little bit of work on our target window. And we're going to get rid of what was the name of your first goldfish. And we're going to say number of burgers ordered. And then we'll put in a regular HTML text box, which we will call txt num burgers. And then in the page markup, we're going to go to the body element and put an onload event in here that says, I want to show the number of burgers ordered. And again, that's going to be a script. And the type is going to be a JavaScript. And then we'll start building our function called show burgers ordered. And what we'll do again is paste in some code. Now we're going to grab the current window, and we'll write this function get rad window in just a moment. I'm going to declare a variable called input that goes out and finds our txt num burgers input field. And then we're going to set the value of that input field to the current window dot argument dot text value. You recall that over in default, we set the argument for the current window, and the text value was the number of burgers that was put in on this window. So that's where that information is coming from. Now, one of the tricks about programming JavaScript is sometimes you need to know if you're in one type of browser or another. Anyway, we're going to write this get rad window function that goes out 
and sees if there's an element called rad window inside the window. And it's either going to be there or it's going to be inside the frame element, depending on which type of browser you're using. And it assigns the rad window to this O window variable and then returns it. So now we've got a reference to the current window. And that's when we go out, find the num burgers, and then take the argument text value from the current window and assign it to the value of the input. And if we run our application at this point, you'll see I've got my number of burgers here is three, and that's passed in to my new window that I'm opening up. If I close up the window and change the number of burgers to five, for instance, and then click on my link, it reads that I now have five. So that's how you pass information into the window that you're opening up. And you notice we didn't do anything with that color and background color that we set. So let's just do something with those. And what this will do for us is set the background color of our input text box to be the color that we pass in as the background color, and likewise for the main text color. Now the next thing I want to do is collect some data. And the data that I want to collect is something very useful, like do you want fries with that? I'm going to put in a radio button list that has two responses, yes and no. Now there are a couple different ways that you can pass data back to the main calling window. And one of those is with a callback function, and the other one is just via the close operation. So let's take the close operation first. I've pasted in some code here, which calls a close window function, and then it's going to snuff the onClick event by returning false. In other words, there's not going to be any more processing take place on this onClick after we call close window. Closing without a callback takes advantage of this same argument mechanism that we had when we passed the information into the rad window that's popping up. What we're going to do is go out and find radio button list one element zero. Just by inspection, I happen to know that this is the element ID of the yes selection on our radio button list. And we check to see if that's checked. This is going to be a Boolean true or false. And we assign that to the result. And then we set the current window dot argument to be true or false and then close the window. Now back in the main window we'll set things up first by defining property called on client close. This gets triggered as JavaScript on the client side and we'll call an on client close event there. Another thing that I want to do is add a text box and this is just going to be a standard ASP text box. And we'll just leave the default ID of text box one there. And finally, I'm going to add some script now that will handle this on client close. So here's our on client close JavaScript. We're going to go out and find the text box, get a reference to that, and then check to see if the argument that was passed is true or false if it was true. And remember, this is just a Boolean variable coming across now as the argument for the rad window. If it was true, then we'll say, yes, please give me some fries in the text box. Otherwise, no thanks, hold the fries. So if we run this now, you notice first of all, when our window pops up, we've now set the foreground and background colors of this text box to the red and yellow that we are passing in. If we click yes and close, then the text in our text box says, yes, please give me fries. If instead we click no, we say no thanks, hold the fries. And if we just leave it blank and close it, it still is not yes. So it assumes that it's no. Now the other method for passing information back in is to use this client callback function. So we'll tell it to call a JavaScript called callback function. And then we'll go write the callback function. So we'll go just back over to the markup and up in all of our scripts here we're going to now place a callback function called callback function and that's going to do virtually the same thing that the close function is going to do up here except it's going to do it via a different route it's going to pass in a return value as well as a reference to the window once again it's going to go out and find the text box check to see this time if the return value is true or false and then set the text accordingly and just to make sure that we're not calling the client close function let's just comment this code out now we also need to do a little bit of setup over on the target side so we're just going to paste in another function which we're going to call 
close with callback, and it's going to do the same thing as the closing window. It's going to get a reference to the current RAD window. Then it's going to go out and check to see if this radio button, uh, the one that says yes, is checked. And in this case, it's going to set the argument property of the window to null. So we're not passing anything back in the argument this time. But what we are going to do is call this current window dot close function, but this time passing in the result, which is going to be either true or false. And that's going to be handled back over here by this return value. Then the other thing that we're going to do in the target is we're going to go down to where the close function is taking place and instead of calling close window when we click the button we're going to call close with callback and so again you can see that if if we run this we select yes we want fries and close it the net result is the same we're going to get our message displayed over here whether it's yes whether it's no this time though the result is being passed back on that callback function instead of as an argument to the window that's closing. Now, so far, we have been invoking our pop-up window when we have clicked on this help div that's, that's been defined down here with our word that says help in it. And that's kind of a declarative invocation of the RAD window. We can also do a programmatic type of invocation of the window by adding a regular HTML button to this table here. The button is going to say show dialog and then in the markup what we'll do instead of relying on this wiring up is we're going to say in here on click is equal to show dialog and that's another JavaScript function that we can write. So we'll just paste in right here a show dialog JavaScript and we're going to introduce a new function here called rad open. Now that's not a normal window JavaScript function. The way that you get this is by adding a rad window manager right here. And so what we'll do is go back up to our rad controls and we'll scroll down and grab a rad window manager and then we'll add it right here and the rad window manager has a Windows collection and what we place inside the Windows collection, no surprise, is the Telerik RAD window that we have already defined. And what happens is when you add this RAD window manager to the page, it makes certain functions available inside window like this window dot RAD open call that we're making here now. And now what we're going to get when we run our application we have a show dialog button and when we click on show dialog it invokes the JavaScript that opens up the RAD window using the services of the RAD window manager. So that's another way that you can open up windows this time in a more programmatic fashion. So that's the RAD window and the RAD window manager and how to post data from your client up into the window that you're opening and return data from the RAD window back to your client application. For more Telerik videos, technical discussion forums, and examples, please go to www.telerik.com.